Hi, everybody. Matt Bull here with another episode of the Business Spotlight. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Carl Bradford from Envision Group Limited. How are you today, Carl? I'm really good, thanks, mate. How are you? Very good. Very good indeed. Um, right, let's get started. Um, just tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what your business does. Uh, hi. So, uh, yeah, so my name is Carl, as you said. Uh, I am the owner and creative director of Envision Group. Um, we are a multifaceted um, sort of 360 approach to um, a what you call like a fashion brand agency dealing with um, design, manufacturing, uh, fulfillment, distribution uh, for, for clothing brands. So sort of a full package, one stop shop. Amazing. Amazing. And how long have you been um, in? The, how long have you had the business for, Carl? Uh, so uh, Envision as it is now is is actually a, a relatively new um, business. We were operating uh, previously for around four and a half, five years um, with a just with a different business name. Mm -hmm. um, but this has been sort of a this is now like a, a rebrand, relaunch, but still doing the same thing. But so probably probably around the it'd be around the five years now. Wow. Okay. And have you, um, what was your background before starting uh, Envision? Uh, so my background before was, uh, I was a, a menswear designer okay. for a brand uh, based in Leicester. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from uh, West Sussex, but I relocated probably around seven years ago now to, to Leicester to work, work for a brand. Um, and sort of then after that, realized I wanted to not only be my own boss, but, but also I realized a service could be offered to people and there was a bit of a gap. Right. Um, I think you, you can easily go to an agency that deals with just design or just marketing or just manufacturing. But I had, as well as my business partner had the, the skill sets to actually deal with a to Z for a brand. Um, so that was kind of the idea behind it, and that's why we started the business. Amazing. I mean, just just to think back, if you could, Carl, it'd be interesting for the viewers. You know, a lot of people have business ideas or see gaps or see things, you know, ways that things could be done differently. Yeah. What was it that actually made you make that decision to, to sort of take the leap and actually start start it? Can you remember back what were the key drivers for you then? I mean, the key driver at the time actually is so before starting the business, when I left the brands um, that I was working for, um, I didn't leave knowing that I was going to start a business. I actually left and just went freelance. Right. Um, just more a case of wanting to take my life and career in a different direction. Mm -hmm. um, and the brands that approached me at the time that needed uh, design, um, I sort of I put together a full season for them. And they were at a point that they wanted to get that made um, abroad, a, a proper custom product, uh, fully cut and sew. Um, but they didn't actually have any of that knowledge at all. So I said that they were sort of going to go and approach people to help them do it. And I said, well, hang on, I've, I know I'm a designer, but I deal with product development um, and manufacturing. So let's hold off. Let's just let me have a look at it. Um, and from there, I, I actually spoke with um, a colleague of mine who uh, got along with really well. And we'd always discussed doing something together. And we ended up starting the business sort of based on that one client, but then wanting to make stuff. So yeah. it was actually a bit of a, I don't know, it just kind of landed at the right time. Um, but I, I already knew there was a massive gap for it that, you didn't have anyone that would do everything under one roof. And was it, I mean, you know, that there's, there's a lot of people who, who will start businesses off that, uh, you know, that one client and that opportunity that's there, um, which sounds on paper, like it was pretty sort of smooth sailing. What were the challenges you had at, at the start? If you can remember, what did you, what did you learn at the start of that journey? Um, I mean, at the start, you've, you've got, there's lots of barriers, finance barriers is massive. Um, you know, luckily we've never taken any uh, funding from outside. Um, it's all been self-funded, but sort of at the beginning, it was very kind of work. It's, you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul, but you are, it is, you're thinking about it on a weekly basis rather than looking at things, you know, 
quarterly or whatever, you're, it is literally almost a day by day, um, especially with uh, in the fashion industry with manufacturing. You know, some of these POs, they're they're pretty hefty financially, yeah. um, and as the people dealing with the manufacturing, we're fronting that. So you it, that's probably I'd say the biggest thing. Um, but I think if you've got the drive and you've got the you've got the the understanding, you kind of you'll make it work. And we did make it work. Yeah. We could have quite easily seen that as a barrier and just gone, ah, oh, we can't do it. But we just made it work. Yes, good. Um, you mentioned you you got a business partner. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we 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 work and we've interviewed with you know quite a few pe people who um, who work in partnerships, and they aren't always mm -hmm. always plain sailing, should we say? Um, mm -hmm. What have you learned about working with somebody else? over the course of the last five or six years? How do, how do you make it work? Uh, I think, I mean, one, I don't think I could do what I do without my business partner, uh, Joe. Um, I think we, uh, we're we quite lucky. We have quite a good balance. Um, as well as different skill sets, we just, the personalities work very well together. I think, um, like, realistically, you spend more time with your business partner than you do your wife. So, like, it is a bit of a marriage. It's, it's like a it's like a work marriage. Um, and I'm lucky enough to also consider him a best friend. He was uh, a groomsman at my wedding. Um, so we also have that bond, which helps. But I think it all depends how open you are. And me and Joe have always had solid, open communication, can speak freely. Um, and so I'm pretty lucky actually, I feel quite blessed. Um, cause I know that's not always the case. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so you mentioned, um, there's a bit of travel involved with, with what you do. Mm -hmm. Um, a question with, with anyone who's, who's sort of travel related or legislation related at the moment is how was the, the COVID period for your business? Did that, how did that impact you? Yeah. So, I mean, from a travel perspective, um, I traveled twice um, around that time. It's when it was fine to travel from the UK, yeah. but it was going to um, it was going to Turkey to some factories, and that that was a very strange experience. Just um, well, as everyone knows, everyone wearing masks, but it was weird being on flights and then landing, and it was all very strict in Turkey as well, and it was. Yeah. It was crazy, but it, it kind of, I think everyone still had to make money. Like businesses had yeah, to yeah. still be doing what they were doing. So we had to make it work. Um, from a business growth perspective, it, it was actually um, massive. I, I'd say I'd say we probably maybe did two to three years worth of growing in the space of, you know, six to eight months because a lot of people had disposable income. Um, and although we're dealing, you know, on a business to business level, um, all of our clients were were smashing it because yeah. everyone's at home and they just want to buy a new t-shirt and make themselves feel better. So we did a lot of growing. Mm. Um, I think, I think that's now affected. Um, it definitely affected us and it affected clients of ours that dropped massively now. Yeah. And I think a lot, a lot of people invested heavily during the period because the money was coming in, yeah. um, but it wasn't going to last forever. Yeah. And uh, you know, obviously, we've now got the financial situation that, that the country finds itself in. And how how are you um, handling that challenge? I mean, there's one thing we we know with 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 the people that that we work with and who we interview that. The only thing we can rely on at the moment is is change, and the marketplace mm -hmm. is shifting massively. Consumers are more informed than they've ever been. Um, you know, both both from a business perspective and and B two C, um, they're making decisions more quickly than ever. How are you having to adapt and respond to the to your the economy that we're in at the moment? I mean, I think it, it's kind of a, a business principle anyway. That we've always operated by is being super nimble um not being rigid so i think it's very easy to put yourself in a box and say well this is what we do so this is what we do but we very much always like an example of that would be 
just before COVID, we um, we invested in printing equipment. So we'd always be outsourcing this stuff. And that's what we do. We'd be taking it to our factories abroad. But we just before COVID decided to invest in printing equipment, which at the time we thought we might be a bit crazy mm. spending this amount of money. But that worked. That that literally that got us through a period um, of time where there was uncertainty. There was these people that were losing their suppliers because their factories were being closed um, due to COVID. But we were able to still operate like a one man team in shifts running a small in-house production to keep these clients ticking over. And we gained clients through that because we were able to sort of, you know, fulfill those needs at that difficult time. So without that flexibility in that example, um, it could have been a very different time. Yeah. And how do you see yourself growing as you move forward because it sounds like over the course of the last five or six years you've 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 grown massively obviously that ability to adapt um massive growth in a short period of time is is is, is often uh, the best way to learn for many people it's the best way to go bust but it sounds like you've, you've, you've yeah. survived that pretty well how do you see yourself growing over the next few years carl um i mean i think for me um although the the sort of the in-house capabilities were uh, they're fantastic at the time and it's something we still want to have and, and always fine tune. Um, concentrating more on the the bulk side of the business that we that we do abroad, that we already do a lot of, but mm. I just want to grow that side of things. Um, I mean, as well as that, we're kind of in the process of uh, hopefully in the next few months launching our own brand. Um, so I think that's definitely... A real interest as well as I think I, I, I'd like to you know, maybe look at acquiring um, brands yeah. um, or even licenses kind of almost like a fashion house type thing um, as well as doing it for other people there's nothing stopping us we have all the capabilities anyway to be doing our own things or whether it's a licensed product or, or anything like that cool um, running a business for a lot of people becomes um, pretty all-consuming, um, and as you say, especially um, if it's if you if you're fast-paced, you've got you you kind of got to be on it. it it's not going to just going to sort of run, run without you you and your business partner being all over it. By the sounds of it, um, mm. how do you maintain a balance? You mentioned you've you've recently got married. How do you maintain a balance and sort of make sure you, you can switch off? I mean, that's that's uh, my wife would uh, definitely have some things to say about that. Yeah, work-life balance is um, that, it's a difficult one. And I, I don't think that's something I personally will ever master. Um, I think something I've learned recently is, is definitely more also about letting things, letting things go a bit. I'm, I'm never going to be able to switch my brain off. That's, yeah. that's not, not in my nature. I'm always thinking about work. But I think it's more important to not let it affect your behavior. So I think... It's fine to be thinking about it, but not not come home in a mood or, uh, you know, let it ruin your weekend with family or mm -hmm. something like that. I think that's more important. And that's something I'm always getting better at. So if anyone has any advice, I'll happily accept. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so the last, the last question uh, I always ask everybody is that... Um, Running a business is is tough. You know, you've 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 taken that step yourself. For a lot of business owners, um, they may they took the step um a year or two ago, as you say, during COVID. It was, it was the opportunity for a lot of people to reassess where they're at, what's important to them, and they're they're trying to grow their business now. They're at that early stage. And as as we've just said, for a lot of businesses, it's tough at the moment. What advice would you give um these early startups watching this who are perhaps thinking you know, it's a bit tougher than I thought it would be or they're finding yeah. it hard. What advice would you give them? Mm, what advice? I'd say, I mean, a couple of things I'd say, and this sounds really cliche, is, you know, nothing worth having comes easy, as they say. Um, if you want it, 
I, I believe that you'll, you'll make it happen. So that's one thing I'd say, um, kind of similar to what we just spoke about is don't, you know, you know, don't sort of like, sort of like a don't sweat the, the small stuff. Stuff's on a daily basis going to go wrong. You're going to be putting out fires. That's just running a business, but you need to look at the bigger picture. Um, I'd say if you can, if you have someone that's in business with you, I think it's a real positive, um, especially if you can have that, that strong bond. Um, that's always going to help. And I also say just, it sounds really, it doesn't sound arrogant, but it, to say like, just like, just do it. <laughs> but sometimes there is a, a bit of that. You need to, you need to try to just like, you have a goal that you want to achieve. You just need to, to sort of chuck everything into it. You, you, if someone started a business, you've already made that jump to maybe leave work or go part time or, or something like that. And there is something where if you're still in that, if you still have that comfort zone, I believe it does stop your full potential. Sometimes it, it you, you still feel safe. So you're not, not necessarily taking risks. Everything should be calculated, but I think, yeah, there's definitely that, that side of things that I'd say is important as well. Amazing. Uh, on that note, Carl, an absolute pleasure to have you on this episode of the Business Spotlight. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for um, the lessons that you've learned that you've shared with everybody. I'm sure people will take a massive amount of value from that. So thank you very much, Carl. Fantastic. Cheers, Matt. Thank you very much for having me. And to our viewers, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Business Spotlight. Many thanks.